in anticipation of our study of Fourier analysis, it's going to do us good to be to uh, review a few integrals involving trigonometric functions. The first most uh, basic of these integrals is when we integrate over one period of either a cosine or a sine wave. So we're saying here that integrating over one period would be integrating from there to there or from here to there. Wherever you start and stop your period, it doesn't necessarily have to start at t equals zero. But as long as you integrate over one complete period, the integral of either the cosine of omega t or the sine of omega t is equal to zero. Now let's take a look at when two different waveforms are being multiplied together. We're going to look first at the situation where you have the sine of something multiplied by the cosine of something else. Now these two frequencies are related to each other. Here we're taking m and n to be two integers. And this sine wave has a frequency of m times omega naught. And this cosine wave has the frequency of n omega naught. So they are both integer multiples of some fundamental frequency omega naught. Using the trig identity for the sine times the cosine of two different angles, we have then this is equal to one half the sine of the sum of those two angles, which is m plus n times omega naught t when we factor out the common term of omega naught t on both of those plus the sine of the difference of those two angles, or the sine of m minus n times omega naught t. Now, in both of these instances, given that m and n are integers, we are going to then integrate over an integer multiple, or an integer number of periods. Both this term and this term will give us an integer number of periods, and we'll be integrating over those. So the integral of this, the integral of the product, which we can rewrite as the sum of two sine waves, is going to be 0 for all values of m and n, including when m and n are equal to each other. We're going to see that this distinction of when m and n are equals to each other leads to a non-zero value when we're talking about the product of the cosine of one frequency times the sine wave of another frequency, when the frequencies are, again, integer multiples of some fundamental frequency. So here we have the cosine of, say, 3 omega naught t times the cosine of 10 omega naught t. M and N, again, are just arbitrary integer values. Using the product rule of the cosine of, of one angle times the cosine of another angle, we have then the one half the cosine of M plus N times omega naught T. It's just the sum of those two angles, plus the cosine of the difference of those two angles, or the cosine of M minus N times omega naught T. Now, when m and n are not equal to each other, we will once again have a cosine of some integer multiple of omega naught. And here we'll also have a frequency that is an integer, no, an integer multiple of omega naught. And so when we integrate across these, we're integrating over an integer number of periods and this integral, the integral of the cosine of m omega, naught, m omega naught t times the cosine of n omega naught t will equal 0 when m does not equal n. But an interesting thing happens when m equals n. When m equals n, we end up with the cosine of 2 times m omega naught t, which when we integrate across that, when we integrate across this term, we are once again integrating over an integer number of periods, and the integral over this term then will be 0. But, and again we're talking about the case when m equals n, so that we end up with a cosine of 0. Unlike up here where we had the sine of 0, the sine of 0 is 0. But down here the cosine of 0 is not 0, it's 1. And so when you integrate over one period, 
this product, which reduces to this expression for m equals n, the integral becomes t over 2 when m equals n. Let's see if we can understand what's happening here. Here we have two cosine waves, one multiplied by the other. This darker waveform is the fundamental frequency, and this lighter waveform is two times the fundamental frequency. Now, this graph here is the plot of these two functions being multiplied together, which, when we integrate over one period, say from this positive going zero crossing to this positive zero going crossing, what we find is that over one period, let's say I said that wrong, we've got, when we integrate over the period, we're going to be going from here to here. And I think you can see that we've got as much above the axis here as below. We have as much above the axis as below. And even in this major lobe, we have as much area above the axis as we have below. So when you integrate over one period of this waveform, or the product of these two waveforms, when m does not equal n, the integral is 0. Now here we have a situation where m and n are equal to each other. So what I've done here is I've got asterisks representing one of the waveforms and a solid line representing the other. And because they are the same frequency, they lay over each other exactly. When you multiply one times the other, it's effectively the cosine squared of the waveform, which then equals this. As we saw here, you have the cosine at twice the base frequency plus a DC offset of 1. So that's what we're seeing here. Obviously now when you integrate this, you're going to get a non-zero value for the situation when m equals n. And when you integrate this over one period, it turns out to equal t over 2. Finally, let's look at the situation where we have the sine of one frequency multiplying the sine of another frequency. Once again, the frequencies of the two different waveforms are related to each other as integer multiples of this fundamental frequency omega naught. Now when we use the product rule here, we end up with one half of negative cosine of the sum of those two angles plus the cosine of the difference of those two angles. And we have basically the same situation that we had for the cosine times the cosine. We end up with two cosine terms, which when m and n are not equal to each other, we end up with an integer number of periods here and an integer number of periods here, which when we integrate across that, that integral equals 0. But once again, when m equals n, this term here turns out to be the cosine of 0, which is 1. And as we had before, when we integrate across this, the result of this part, the cosine of 2m omega naught t, we're integrating over an integer number of periods. That part of it goes to 0. But when we integrate the constant 1 from 0 to t, once again, we end up with the value of that integral being t over 2 when m equals n.